G'day guys and welcome to today's episode. We're super pumped for this one. We're going to be talking all things Y62 Patrol. We've had this car now for 90,000 Ks and a little bit over three years. We built this thing to travel Australia. We've been now been traveling Australia for a year and a half full time, taking on some of the most epic tracks in Australia, towing our cavern around full time and man, what an absolute beast this thing has been. We're going to be doing today we're going to be doing a bit of a bit of a rundown a little bit of a review of the mods we've done things we would change maybe or just sort of our our own experience of the car and the things we've done to it we've got an absolute epic location out here in far north queensland just an hour south of cairns we're out here it's called paradise camps so you can find this one on wiki camps or hip camp we've got a whole private space here today just to bring you guys this special video so we're super pumped for this one we've got our own private creek running through here nice green grass nice hills in the background it's absolutely epic. So super excited for this one, guys. Let's get into it. Before we dive deep in, just a little bit of background knowledge about this car. It's a 2019 Nissan Patrol Y62. It's a Series 4. Uh, we got this thing standard, brand new. And then the early days, uh, the mods, we got the guys at Sparta Melly 4x4 in Madura. They done the original mods to this thing. All the bar work, suspension, wheels, tires, everything. Absolute amazing job, absolute amazing crew down there. They've been a big part uh, of this car, keeping it up and going when we're back in Madura, uh, going over it, maintenance and checking things, making sure things are absolutely uh, spot on. Since then, we've also had on-track 4x4. Andrew, the team there, they've actually created a lot of mods for this car, where without these guys, we'd actually be probably driving around in cars with no lifts and all that still, so mega appreciative for those guys. A lot of the bling parts on here, uh, the suspension, GV upgrades and stuff, it's all done by, uh, done, been done by these guys, and it's just turned this thing into just to an absolute beast. So there's a couple little sneaky things on here which you guys probably haven't seen yet, which we can actually finally talk about today. So I'm super, super excited to show you guys them. Let's start at the front of this thing. So if you guys have been following us for a while, you're probably noticing that uh, maybe the last sort of six months, the cars looked a little bit different at the front. We used to have uh, three three uh, big driving lights along the front here. Uh, the main reason we sort of took them off when we got back from over west, uh, we decided to paint the front bar and stuff and clean things up a little bit. We ended up putting the big x-ray light along the top there. So once we sort of had this thing off, we realized like how heavy the freaking thing was. So something had to give and realistically, we weren't really doing that much night driving. So we took it off. I think it really neatened it up a little bit. It does sort of allow, not that it ever cause issues, but definitely does allow a bit more airflow uh, going through there to cool this uh, cool this big engine down. So we've got the dash off road uh, front bar here. This has been on the car uh, pretty much since brand new. Again, we gave it a quick freshen up with some paint, but it, it's been uh, absolutely amazing. We've never had any bolts come loose or anything like that. Uh, it's super lightweight. These things, you do have to be careful with the, with the weight you can put on the front. Like, you know, people will ask, you know, why don't you have a big, a big bull bar on there for protection and stuff, but like, look, we had one of those on our last sort of on a Holden Colorado and look honestly since this like our, our main goal with the front bar on this was uh, for, the, for the lightweight to mount accessories, extra clearance for off-roading and all that stuff and it definitely does add a little bit of protection obviously not like your big bars but look since I've been driving since I've been 18 so what's that like 22 years 23 years uh, touch wood I've never hit something not saying it's going to happen one day but it's just for us it's just we just didn't really want to have that. Uh, have that sort of look and I think this looks absolutely awesome and for what we do it's really practical. With the headlights on these Series 4, uh, the standard headlights are absolutely crap so we've updated to the LEDs by the guys at KO Gear so we've got uh, LED front, uh, low, low and high beams, we've got all the interior lights inside, exterior lights, even got some little fancy uh, party lights for the fog lights down there which honestly we don't really use uh, that much. Uh, they've been absolutely awesome in saying that at the moment we've actually got a blown uh, front headlight at the moment up at Cape York. I'm assuming it was uh, some water got in there uh, and blew it, maybe some corrugations as well but I reckon it happened on the south half of the tally track so actually got a blown uh, blown headlight globe at the moment but other than that uh, they have been uh, absolutely awesome uh, we've got the ultra winch now so this has been uh, something that's, that's pretty new on the car maybe the last sort of four or five months already it's copped a, a massive workout uh, up at cape york's so, uh, some uh, some pretty crazy winching going on there i uh, had the winch a tree off a couple of off, off a track there so it has got quite a fair bit of workout so far Previously, we had the carbon winch. We actually went through two of them. 
Uh, great specs, like they were, they were absolute, you know, spec wise awesome winch, but twice it, uh, it let me down with not that much use, especially not much serious use. Uh, what ended up being, I think it was the solenoid in front, uh, inside of the, the winch, it was sort of getting hot and sort of melting itself and that would, that's what made the control box get, uh, get stuck. So you had to sort of tap it, it would kind of work, then it wouldn't work, but I just lost trust in it, so we ended up uh, getting rid of it. A winch is one of those things that you need to have trust in that when, you, when you're going to need it, which could be once every five years or something, but it could literally be uh, you know, sometimes even a life-saving sa moment. It, it can be that serious. So super pumped with, pumped with this. It's kind of same specy wise with the uh, with the carbon winch, it's, it's nice and light, so uh, that's been awesome. Uh, we got in the contact there with the guys from Melly 4x4. They sort of uh, hooked us up with the guys there, and that's been um, absolutely awesome. Nothing to complain about that winch so far, but it is kind of uh, early days there. So, got the Mertz number plates. Obviously, some people ask what the hell that means. Uh, my last name is Murta, so Mertz is just a, a, a nickname I've sort of, <laughs> sort of got from there, so that's what that means. Uh, we've got the Dash Off Road underbody protection uh, this stuff's uh, copped an absolute hiding uh, it just yeah it covers all the vital parts underneath uh, without being too heavy as well so that's been uh, super exciting if you look underneath we got the uh, the front billet cover it's got a, um, a diff drop in the front there uh, from the guys on track 4x4 all the diff housing looks absolutely sick We've got an ARB uh, front air locker inside of there as well we were tossing up between the ARB or the Harrop we were actually going to go uh, with the Harrop but it was just at the time we we're looking to get this it was just on back order for ages uh, once the ARB one rocked up and was in the car uh, then the Harrop one rocked up like the, ne the next day but we've got that hooked in the air and look I, we haven't had an issue with it you you press the button it instantly comes on and it's been it's been absolutely uh, awesome there and look Touch it on the lockers and these things. Uh, this, the rear locker in the back is just your standard uh, Nissan one, which is awesome. We've got the diff override kit in there as well, which is something we went quite a while without, and I highly recommend that. So you can actually have the rear diff lock on uh, in, in uh, four wheel drive high as well, which you can't usually in the standard one. Uh, and sometimes there's always a little bit of a delay. Like if you sort of add an obstacle and you want that rear locker uh, quickly, sometimes you have to sort of wait a bit or, or rock back and forth to really lock it in. Majority of the time you pretty much just hit it and the, and the uh, rear diff lock comes on straight away. So we've actually been quite a while without having a front diff lock in this thing and man, once we put it in, it absolutely changed the car entirely. And look, if you've been on the fence about it for a while, just get the friggin' thing put in. So we did all this at the same time. We do have a bit of a video if you go back and have a look at that one. We'll pop a link up above of when we did all the mods, did all the build stuff, the diff housings and that uh, down at on track. That's when we put this uh, diff lock in. And look, it just it just changed everything. Like just, you can really slow things down on the track crawling up hills and stuff. That's where a lot of blokes will do damage when you sort of really got to, you know, bounce things to keep that momentum going up and just slows everything down, just crawls over things and it literally just turns this thing into an absolute beast. All right, so a little bit of a look under the hood here. No, there's no supercharger. There's no turbocharger. Uh, this thing is literally, literally pretty much stock standard. Right? We've got the uh, Torca catback exhaust, which we'll touch on that uh, sort of once we get down that end there. Now look, to be honest with you guys, we actually did have a supercharger booked into this thing uh, quite a while ago, but it sort of ended up being, this is sort of just before we'll sort of actually decide to know we're gonna sort of be traveling full time and going to these remote places. And back at the time there, Harrop was actually kind of the ones that sort of talked us out of it. They sort of just really didn't have the, more just like the fuel, like I know you can put uh, Octane Booster and stuff in it, but they didn't really love that idea. And look, neither do I, I know it, I know it works, but especially when you're towing as well, it's under a lot more load and you just, you can add 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 um add octane booster in there, but you just you still never gonna know exactly what octane you you're actually running. So, um, but look, that's kind of we do, we chose sort of not to do that. And look, now we've been traveling full time uh, around Australia. I'm actually so glad that I don't have it. Uh, definitely cool. A lot of people we know have them. Sort of living around a town, you sort of always got 98 octane and going just doing trips and stuff. It would definitely be sick. Um, but it's not something we have done, and I'm actually glad we didn't because this thing has been so reliable. Uh, you know, the big 5.6 V8. Uh, we, we try and run 98 octane where we can. I know you can you can definitely run 91 octane this thing, no dramas. We just finished Cape York and we had to do you know quite a fair few tanks of 91. I definitely know the difference. A lot of people don't. Uh, I've, I've raced motorbikes pretty much all my life, so like I'm really sort of in tune with those things. Like I could sort of really tell if I had like BP or shell fuel on my motorbike. Like that's sort of how how sort of touchy I, I was on that. But look. They can definitely do it. Uh, I always like to run the best. 95, they, these things run really good on 95. Uh, there's probably nearly more fuel efficient on 95 as well. Like they're really, between 95 and 98, it's actually really close. But we will touch on fuel economy, but I'm going to do that at the end because I know a lot of you guys probably come here 
uh, just for that, and you guys can wait till the end. So, um, but yeah, we sort of always try and run, uh, always try and run 98 octane. But look, it, that's sort of everyone can sort of uh, do that there. But again, all no tune. It says fully, fully stock engine now. What problems have we had? Uh, so we've done a, actually done a starter motor. So ran uh, 20,000 Ks, literally I was at the ATM before I was literally taking it 200 meters down the road to Nissan's for his 20 k uh, 20,000 K service. Never had any warning, any uh, mess up and it just, we hit the button and nothing uh, on the tow truck. I had to go to Nissan, ended up being the starter motor. So I sort of asked them because I did a lot of mud driving that uh, that weekend before and I'm like, look, it had to be that. I even told them that. I uh, just don't want to know if that was it. And they sort of said it, it, it wouldn't have anything to do with it, but probably did. Like the starter motors are deep in the valley on these things. So they're pretty, pretty deep in there. So it's kind of, kind of protected from things. But if you sort of had to do one on a track, you know, it's, it's if you don't really know what you're doing, it would be quite a, uh, quite a fair bit of a task and that's why you know it probably end up being a tow job so that was really unexpected since then it's been absolutely uh, beautiful again we're at 90,000 k's now the other issue we had was probably around the sort of same amount of k's maybe around that 30,000 k's uh a viscous hub now, this has actually been quite uh quite common and quite a fair few, few patrols uh not just like the series fours we've seen a lot of actually series fives people like having their car in the first few weeks doing this uh so ours actually overheated twice so uh not that they did not that they did damage they did all damage tests and that when we finally got it into nissan but uh what it was is just when we we're on sort of slow low range tracks going up a hill on hot days no airflow uh the fan so the viscous hubs are right behind the fan there the fan just wasn't kicking in and the car was getting hot so what these things do as a safety precaution is uh, once they start getting hot the air conditioner starts uh cuts out and starts blowing out uh, pretty much hot air as a bit of a safety thing so even on a hot day like Madura, like 47 degree days 40 degree days like we'd pull up at a even sometimes at a red light would be enough you sort of stop there pause uh and the in the air comma start sort of start blowing out hot air so we got that sorted it was a pain in the ass to get it sorted because uh obviously they've got their systems have to go through they need to sort of see the problem happen and diagnose it in the shop but like i literally had videos of the thing like you know we're calling pissing out of it and it was a bit of a nightmare to get it <laughs> to get it done but finally got it done the new viscous hub and that's been absolutely uh, no drums at all since then so literally those two things over 90,000 k's that's pretty much like you know engine wise and stuff uh that's the only two problems we've had which are Pretty minor, they sort of both happened, like if the starter motor happened at the top of Cape York, probably would have bothered me a lot, a lot more. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much uh, all we've sort of had there. So the only other problem we've had that's not Y62 related, but uh, from mods we've done was we had the DCS E80 Extreme battery. Absolute awesome specs, like the, the specs of it, the weight, the, the power capacity absolutely awesome so we actually went through three of those batteries so they were sort of sort of really good for four to six months now, now i just started having troubles with them like the the first couple had a bad batch with the bms inside of it it was it was uh putting out high voltage so like when i'd like get up the car a little bit uh the uhf inside was giving like a high voltage reading so that's sort of how i knew something was going on the car even shut it a couple of times and it was just just doing some weird stuff and i have seen a few other people have these issues um again the guys were there were really good to deal with and that um and we got a replacement one a replacement one and then just just it, it was just getting sort of warm the, the battery was warping a little bit and it actually ended up shooting itself and just uh, and stopped working anyway so that was just something that i know some blokes have had them in their car for quite a while but um look it's just that's something we just lost trust in and we, we we end up just taking it out uh, and on track and i was putting in a good old uh Delcor battery there which has been absolutely fine so the only other thing we got under here is we got the arb uh diff breathers so the diff breathers are actually pretty good on these things standard but it's definitely something you're going to be doing like we just got back from cape york so like a lot of water uh it's something you definitely want to put in get it done properly uh that's something we've learned the hard way back about colorado water crossings out diff breathers uh made an absolute mess of things so uh, by having this we've just been up at cape york got the car service a lot of water um we've been going through a lot of water uh the diffs were absolutely everything there was absolutely uh perfect so definitely recommend that we've got the uh, five inch uh fabwood stainless snorkel here uh, into an airbox here so it's got their adapter there uh this thing has been awesome like it's just the sound the induction noise this thing makes it's absolutely awesome but look i guess if you're looking for a snorkel it's going to do the most best snorkel things uh probably isn't you know the stainless like you know your safari snorkels and that are probably probably the go like they go they sort of recycle the air and all that sort of stuff they do a little bit more they're going to join up to the airbox and that bit and you're not cutting a big ass hole 
uh, in the in the side of your car. But we've had no dramas with it. When we first got this snorkel, we were sort of in that kind of maybe handful of first people to sort of have them. Uh, all their stencils were up to shit when we uh, had to cut a poor old spider Mali 404. We literally had to like just wing it and cut the hole ourselves. So uh, the mounting brackets weren't right. Uh, the mounting onto the, uh, onto the airbox here wasn't right at the time. So the thing nearly went in the bin a couple of times, but that was just sort of going through that uh, stage of just them getting things right from the start. Like, look, if you went if you went and got it installed straight from them, I'm sure it would have been, you know, no dramas, but got it all on now. It's been absolutely awesome. Uh, it sounds sick, plenty of air intake, and we haven't had any issues um, with any water in the air box and that. We did have, we did end up, we did first of all seal this air box up for, for deep water crossings and that, but when we drove through some hectic rain, we actually got a bit of water uh, in the air box just from the snorkels as, as they're sucking it straight in. So we unplugged that hole down the bottom there. Haven't driven through much uh, massive rain uh, from there yet, but other than that, always keeping up to date. We're just checking the air box, anything inside of there. Um, but that's been awesome. So usually I run a little bit of a little bit of grease around the air filter uh, if you're going to be doing, um, you know, Cape York gear, like you know, dusty tracks and stuff like that. Just really helps sort of seal the the lip uh, of the air box. Okay, come around to the side of the car. Uh, at the front here, we've got the on-track 4x4 recovery points. These things have been absolutely awesome. I actually have my winch rope just hooked on there uh, when we're driving around. If you're going to be do, do, doing a double line pull, you're probably not prepared to be getting uh, snatched out in these things, but uh, you absolutely never know. And look, definitely worth having an awesome set of recovery points on there. I really like these ones because they sit up nice and high. I've seen some where the, the sort of hook on it sits low. If you're going to be doing a lot of rock stuff, you're just going to smash the uh, thing straight into, into rock walls. So absolutely love them. We've got the ROH Vapors. Uh, 18 by 9 these are a POS 30 offset. I really think these are just the absolute sort of perfect offset. Like the wheel uh, doesn't poke out at all. Like it's just sort of right on that line there. So I think it works uh, really, really well. We've got the BF Goodridge KM3. Uh, these are 325, 65, 18. So previously we ran the 35 by 12 and a half, 18, uh, exact same tires. So the reason we went to these is at the time we went to get some, I think it was during COVID and we just couldn't get any stock of them. So the 325s are obviously they're a bit wider uh, and they're just like a touch. There's still a 34 point uh, six inch on their website. That's their. That's not a true 35. So still just a little bit, uh, a little bit shy of that. So two inches bigger than standard. So it's all good there. Uh, but yeah, these tires have been absolutely amazing. The rim is awesome as well. Like just the offset, the way it works, uh, works out really well. So we're back when we had the 35s uh, with this rim as well. Uh, with this, these fitted in no dramas with the uh, with no lift. Back when we had that then. Uh, so that's definitely always a. Can I fit 35s with no lift? Uh, yes, you can, uh, depending on, you know, offset and that stuff with the rims out there. But that's one good thing out of these trolls. Uh, big wheel arches so you can put uh, put big tyres in. So underneath here, we've got the, uh, so we've got a two inch lift kit in here. This is the on-track uh, two inch lift. So that comes with your, uh, the different lower, lower control arms. So we've had this lift in pretty much since we sort of uh, got the car. So but then since then, uh, we've gone up a bit. We uh, we changed the, we did a little bit of a spring lift. So uh, on track, put a bit of a, a heavier spring and a little bit of a, a taller spring in there. So that gave us a bit more height uh, at the front, which just made it absolutely awesome. It changed the ride. Not that we had that much weight on the front, but it just uh, definitely made a massive difference. So another beautiful thing we got under there is the on track uh, billet arms under there absolutely epic so these are uh, non-greasable there's no caps in it on there so they're, they're just maintenance free they make no noises and it made a huge difference so the main difference i've found with these things is especially when towing uh, i used to find it was a little bit a uh, little bit sort of sway like you know it was feel little, really light and just sort of a little bit unstable when we used to be uh towing but it's literally solved all of that so drives absolutely beautiful that's something we went quite a long time without we had to lift without the arms you don't need the arms to do the lift uh, but now I've got them, I definitely sort of highly recommend it. So just touching on the snorkel again, so this is the low cut snorkel. So I know with the Fabwitz ones, you can get the, the low cut one. We did previously have uh, just the normal size one, I guess they call it. It kind of comes up uh, comes up here. Uh, definitely sort of, I definitely like the look of the low cut one. That's why I ended up changing over it. Uh, looks absolutely sick. So the induction noise, with the window up, you honestly don't hear it. You wind it down and give it hell, you definitely hear it. So it's definitely not a problem. Like, don't stress if it's going to annoy the missus or whatever. Um, but it's crazy just how, how how quiet these things uh, are inside, especially with that with that big stainless snorkel on there. So got a big X-ray uh, light bar up in the top there. Absolutely love this thing. Doesn't give us any any bonnet glare. Just gives out an absolute beautiful uh, beautiful nice light out there. We've actually pretty we're pretty lucky. Uh, we know the guy from X-ray Troy there. So we actually had some um, custom made uh, from Patriot Games some 
uh, mounting brackets up there and it actually fitted on our roof rack absolutely perfect so that's what we got up there the nice and lightweight just sits so beautiful uh, along the roof there got the ARB base rack roof rack so this is something we only have had on the car for not that long really we sort of never really thought we needed one or really had much need for one but as we started traveling we really wanted to uh really wanted to sort of um, have something there to mount our max tracks on the roof and just sort of uh, have that sort of if we wanted to chuck some wood up there or swag or just whatever we're going to do one day so we're sort of in the same boat as a lot of other people it's like when you go from all trains to mud tires it's like you know it's going to be noisy all that sort of stuff you've seen the horror stories of some really loud uh, roof racks and that this thing's been absolutely awesome you like you literally don't even know the things on there if it is windy or you're getting some crosswind it just kind of sounds like it's just like a little bit more windy outside like that's sort of the worst absolute worst case but it's really like really low profile it just sits absolutely beautiful i just think to my to my honest opinion i think it's actually probably the best probably the best uh, roof rack out there down the side of the car here we've got our protection which is the bush barrows absolutely freaking love these things we travel them on full time there is a little bit of maintenance with that we're not going to go too much into that this uh on this episode we've got a uh, another episode there we did we'll put, i'll pop the link up above we go into our sort of our experience with the bush barriers and that uh, what we do with traveling in full time but look these things have saved so many freaking scratches on the car you can take them on and off uh, absolutely awesome and definitely going to be out doing some scratchy tracks these things are a pretty wide car uh, couldn't recommend these things enough we've never had anyone ever have one fall off i know uh, some people always ask that some people have as long as you got them on there properly uh doing the maintenance pulling them back make sure that's not dirty uh we've had absolutely zero issues there absolutely love them our rock sliders down here these are the x rocks rock sliders and honestly over the years i've actually rarely seen and many of these around at all so whether they even make them or not still i'm actually not too sure the guys at melly 404 uh got these got these for us i can't actually remember uh who they come from so i think they really they look really good they're nice and uh close to the car like some people kind of like that's going to hit on rocks uh it never has it's been absolutely awesome uh then saved the car uh, quite a bit G'day guys, we hope you're enjoying today's episode. We want to quickly interrupt because we have an extremely exciting announcement to make for you guys. As you would have seen, we're wearing our Traveling Campus merch as we've been going around Australia for quite a while now. And the extremely exciting announcement is we now have this available to you guys. So we'd love to see you out there. This is our Team Traveling Campus range. Love to see you guys out there exploring, for driving in our gear. They're available right now on our website. So we've got men's, women's, kids, tees, and even some hoodies. So you can jump on right now and shop and they'll be posted straight to you. Also on our website, we've got heaps of blog posts. So how we travel with Georgia, so traveling with a dog, We've got all about our car and our van, and also we've got how we travel full time. So if that's something you've been interested in, you can jump in and check it out, and we can even help you if that's something you want to do. Exactly, and look, we don't ask too much from you guys at all, but look, we'd love you to take just 10 seconds to make sure, because we've seen the stats, and a lot of you guys that have watched frequently aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So please, just jump across, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell. That means you won't miss a, a one minute of traveling camps. And look, give the video a like, jump in the comments. We love to engage with you guys. So look, just let us know that your favorite takeaway, your favorite part of the episode, chuck something in there, we'll get back to you and we can engage with you guys in there. As That's what we're trying to do, is build a traveling campus community of all traveling like-minded people. Uh, as we've been going around, we've been meeting so many of you guys. It's been absolutely what amazing. we absolutely love. That's what we've been all about. So again, guys, back to the episode. Thanks so much. Touching on the inside of the car, we've left this thing again pretty damn uh, stock and look, yes, I know, wood grain, it's like the most sort of common thing now, it's getting on and on, it's like, come on, give us a freaking updated interior and look, I feel you guys, I'm exactly the same, look, honestly, the wood grain doesn't bother us, we haven't covered it up, we keep it nice and clean, you know, it honestly doesn't really bother me, but look, if, if we were to build another one of these things, we de would definitely uh, cover it up and look, Going, in the, going into the future, who knows, it's sort of getting, uh, you know, there's Y63 talk now and, you know, no more V8, uh, updated interior, although the updated interior we've seen in the overseas model, it's not, it's not that different, like it is a little bit different, but it's still not as updated as I kind of, I kind of thought it, it might be, but look, going forwards, like who knows what's going to happen. Uh, my ultimate dream would be that there's a uh, Y62 V8 last model and we get updated interior. That's going to happen, probably not. There's a talk of the uh, Nissan Warrior uh, doing a sort of special version there, so uh, that could that could be definitely cool there. But good, it's it's just a guessing game. Like these, you know, people out there doing on websites that are doing, hey, this is coming, this is coming. It's all just kind of guess talk and a bit of. So who who really knows what's going to happen there? But look, definitely uh, update interior definitely needs to happen. Uh, we've been lucky enough to drive some brand new Rams lately, like the Ram TRX. 
uh, absolutely amazing seeing the interior of those things with the screen stuff it definitely does uh, make you miss it but look once you're inside these things these cars are that freaking good it kind of just it kind of just goes away you don't really um you don't really sort of uh, it doesn't really let us bother us anymore but in here we've got our little dometic uh screen up here this is for our caravan reverse camera so we can see everything behind us so a lot of people ask why we don't have tow mirrors should i have them probably and do i kind of want them i still do want to sort of have them on there but i've just never found any that i've been happy with they had the clip on ones and that and they're just absolutely horrible so i can literally see everything uh 24 7 uh towing the caravan with this thing so i've been sort of waiting for msa i know they're going to be bringing out some uh powerful ones i've we use our power fold mirrors quite a bit when we're off-roading stuff in car parks and that so waiting for that to come out and i'll probably grab some of them uh when that do come out so inside here we've got the corobator dash there's a lot of uh, sort of talk about this at the start when it come out uh, we've had this for quite a while in the car now and look it's been absolutely awesome we've had no uh, no faults or glitches of ours it's been really really good we purchased this off it was crowbar tour australia at the time uh the guy from i think warrior 4x4 i think he's called um so he sort of started importing these and that that's who we got ours off uh he doesn't sell them anymore uh so sort of the get go to for the for these screens now is probably easy off road uh in australia and i think you can get them direct from uh, from canada as well but um, EC Off-Road seems to be the go uh, for that. So our center console in the middle here, our, our entertainment unit, we've kept that standard. And there's quite a few new options now, which there seems to be some pretty good options. There's some pretty shit ones out there as well, but we've sort of just stayed away from that. Um, again, I'll probably just leave this one uh, standard inside. So we've got our uh, airbags, our little controller down here, uh, which we're gonna show you uh, the really exciting part, my most favorite mod in the car. Uh, once we get to the back of that there, we've got that little uh, digital gauge in the front there, which gives us wireless wireless air control so got the gme uh handheld radio the gme whip on the front there uh we will sort of we are going to have a breakdown of our car so we'll go sort of more into the the specs and models and uh maybe a couple of links on our website as well so make sure you check out that we'll have more of a detailed rundown uh on there if you sort of missed anything or don't want to go back and watch uh this whole episode so we will chuck some uh some things up there with some photos and stuff so um pretty much what else have we got in here we've also got our front locker um switching that in there uh, we've got an uh, iDrive in here, so this is, uh, I think they're called Ultimate 9 now, so uh, this was back when they were iDrive, it's a throttle controller, uh, if you put one of these comments in the uh, Y62 group, you usually get absolutely hammered, but like, uh, these things, like, do they make as much difference than diesel? No, they don't, but would I suggest one? Yes, I would. They actually do make a shit ton of difference, so when we're towing, I have this on Ultimate 9, uh, we tow in manual mode, which I would... Um, definitely recommend these things are the sort of one things that's i don't like about the patrol is uh in automatic especially in cruise control they hunt gears like crazy especially if you're towing a caravan up hills or in headwinds if you're in good conditions just towing a nice flat road our uh, drive actually works uh, pretty nice but we tow in manual mode we're usually in that sort of fifth sixth gear we never sort of tow in seventh gear so that just sort of keeps the temperatures down a little bit on uh through the through the drive line the, the the diffs and all that stuff you transfer so just sort of keep things a little bit nice and i just feel like you have a lot more access uh to more power there but also off-road as well we obviously got your rock mode and mud and sand and all those uh, switches that this and have gen uh genuinely really really good but what i also do is when i'm real rocky stuff i still found that it was quite uh still quite sort of jerky on the track so i actually put it in economy mode uh and turn it right down to like economy three four with rock mode and it slows everything right down it's an absolute game changer so that's um yeah again people said no they don't give you more horsepower they don't um it's not a tune or whatever like it's 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 none of that i feel like the people that comment this stuff uh, don't actually have one themselves but is it a necessary no but does it make a difference uh yes it does all it does it's pretty much just a signal from your throttle to the ecu you can sort of control how quick or slow that is that, that's pretty much uh what it is got our uh, red arc topo um our little switch down here for the caravan absolutely awesome got some winch points in here as well uh, after we flooded our car at old colorado a few years back uh, when the our ultra winch uh, sorry not an ultra winch we had a rumba winch back then uh, that cut out in the water cost us a car so we've got a um a winch point inside here uh, i've got a winch remote uh, a wireless remote and i've also got a uh, another winch remote that we can have uh wired in at the front there so i've got uh three different points uh for my winch up on our arb roof rack we've got our uh, four max tracks extremes recovery board so these are something i think it's definitely uh a necessity when you are uh, traveling around so we've uh Generally, sort of thing we don't like to get stuck at that, but we've definitely caught out sometimes when, we, uh, when we've needed these things. So these are mounted up just with the Max Trax uh, Extreme uh, pins, which can do four of them. They bolt on there nicely and uh, fit absolutely beautiful up there. So into the back setup here, this is uh, Georgia, our dog. We travel full time with a dog, so 
We've got the uh, Navigator uh, hammock in here. Absolutely awesome for it. It's just so good. Keeps her in there. Just she's nice and protected. It's got she's just chills out in there. It's just absolutely uh, awesome. So we also use this to put some wood in there as well. Because uh, if you get a heap of shit there, you can just sort of take it out, shake it off, vacuum it, hit of the hose, whatever. So that's been uh, absolutely awesome, and it fits really, really nice in the back there. So. Underneath the, um, our, we've got a false floor, the full ball Forby uh, drawers false floor in here. And then underneath that, we've got some uh, gear mounted under there. So we've got two ARB uh, compressors under there, and we've got two air tanks. So we've got an air tank that's hidden underneath the false floor there, which you can't see. And then we've got another one hidden up uh, underneath the back where the spare wheel used to go underneath there. So we've also got a 350 watt uh, Red Arc inverter under there. That's just for charging uh, camera gear. We've got like um, drone batteries and stuff in the background there. That's pretty much sort of all we all we use it for and that's and it's absolutely enough so it's been that's actually been uh, really really handy so the, the false four in these things so freaking neat they just they fit in so bloody nice bolt in no noises whatever uh, we've got the drawers as well which i'll show you guys in a minute it also gives you plenty of space under there as well so battery wise we've got the uh, 120 amp itech world battery it, they can lay on their side it fits under there uh, absolutely beautiful uh is the power enough it, it kind of is, kind of isn't, but to honest answer, probably not. I kind of wish I had like a 200 amp, maybe uh, 220, or you know, maybe 200 or a touch more. All we're running is the, the two air compressors under there, uh, the fridge, that's sort of the main sort of things. Like I sort of get, you know, two days of the cars parked up and it's pretty warm like it has been lately. The battery does get sort of quite low and with this battery in the back, when it does go flat, it goes flat. So you have to jump start the thing, which is absolutely pain in the ass, but um yeah like, again i probably would it has been a great battery value for money if i was to go again i'd probably get like an a drive or some sort of uh probably a little bit better brand um battery i think uh going forward so in the background there i've got a uh um a anderson plug in there that uh, melly 54 put in me so i can do um external solar panels so uh which abs works absolutely awesome just saves up usually we, we didn't have this and we had to i had no solar panel charging for the car at all so to sort of have to be driving or would go flat so we can definitely plug it in now and stay places uh, for a lot longer so that's pretty much that pretty much covers uh, everything from the side here let's go around to the back for a look all right so around to the rear of the car now we've got quite a fair bit going on here so some mega exciting uh, stuff back here so across the back here we've got the Kmart rear bar again we've had this on for uh, for so long now it's been absolutely awesome really love the approach angle on it that's sort of the main reason why we got that we wanted to get the the spare wheel from up underneath the car up onto the back here so you obviously can have the option to have two wheel carriers uh, on the back we can do a wheel carry and one has jerry cans or something we didn't really have the need for that we also obviously everything we do on this car was trying to keep the uh the weight to the minimum so we've got the spare wheel mounted up on here so that is a 35 up there uh came out on their website and stuff they only sort of recommend uh, that's going to fit a 33 inch tire uh, i think that's more just for warranty sort of reasons and stuff but we've had a 35 inch a 35 inch tire in there for a bit over three years now all corrugations done and given absolutely absolute flogging and it's been totally fine so uh don't if something does go wrong don't blame me for that but it uh, definitely does uh does work up there so got the navigator uh carry bag on the back there so this has been absolutely awesome we've got all our max tracks recovery gear in there uh, when we go on day trips and stuff we'll just put like rubbish in the back with our water shoes and uh just sort of things like that so that's been mega handy it gives a bit of extra uh better extra room out of the um out of the drawers in the back there which are gonna show you guys uh in a tick underneath we've got the torque it uh three inch exhaust so again we've had this thing on from nearly day dot so a bit over three and a half years uh it's been absolutely sick i still to this day there's been quite a few more people uh, manufacturing exhaust for these things now custom jobs i still think that these sound the best they're just the the quality of them though, i think they get that really nice deep stainless uh, especially when they warm up that real nice deep quality v8 noise so definitely love that thing uh we've got the four inch tip on there so again at the start was sort of that first sort of three four handful of people that had the talking exhaust on the patrol uh they had the big long bloody knob looking thing uh, hanging off the back uh but when, when we that first sent that first one actually had a four inch tip on it so like absolutely beautiful so we um just trimmed that one down a bit so it fitted nice because it was hanging down uh, nice and low but look this exhaust has been awesome that i know we, we ha i haven't even checked a nut on this thing uh since day one so absolutely no dramas at all there i'm starting to get like a little bit of like a like in the mu rear muffler like a little bit of a rattle i think there could be something maybe like a, a rock or something that sort of sounds like so um but it's been again i had had absolutely no dramas it's absolutely copped 
uh, copter flogging. So up underneath there, mega exciting. The rear coil delete, uh, full full air underneath there. This is something that is obviously uh, very, very new. This is one of the first cars uh, to have this on here. A lot of people obviously want to know how it's going to go. Getting a lot of questions about how it's been. And look, it's been absolutely freaking unreal. It's probably the it's probably the most favorite mod, honestly, uh, on the car. So especially towing full time. Uh, just we saw we used to have uh, 400 kilo constant springs in the back with Airbag Man airbags, uh, but it's still just sort of. It still just never sat the totally level the way I wanted it to. So with this thing, uh, we put whatever load you want on there and it's going to sit absolute level. So for us, it's sort of around that 80, 90 PSI. We sort of, it's sort of where we get our nice level when we're fully loaded with the caravan and that. But also not just towing, just this thing's uh, standard. Drives absolutely awesome. It pretty much just feels like it, the thing will stock with no mods. Uh, that's pretty much how it feels. Maybe if not a little bit better. So these things have been awesome. There's been a little bit of misconception saying these things aren't certified, engineered, all that stuff. They are. Um, so that's it's pretty much at the moment. It's pretty much just like swapping in a new set of a new set of springs in there. So at this time of the video, I know it's very, very, very freaking close. It has been a longer wait than what we sort of wanted, but. Uh, they, they haven't been signed off for, to increase the GVM. That's the only thing they're waiting on, which requires them to have the onboard air system. So this, he's ha uh, they've been going through quite a, this is the guys that are on track, been going through quite a few different systems there for this. And um, they obviously want to have the best option there and they're so freaking close to having this. So once this has the auto air level option, it will be officially be an absolute game changer. So really me mega excited for that. So pretty much how it works at the moment. If you were to put this into a stock standard patrol, your GVM is still going to be three and a half ton. Uh, for us in this thing, we've got the uh, GVM upgrade to 4,085 kilos. That's what our GVM is. So that's pretty much how it works at the moment. It doesn't change. Whatever your GVM is, uh, that's what it's going to be. So the new GVM coming up, I don't want to spoil it, but it's uh, it's going to be more than what we've got on here at the moment. So that's going to be mega exciting. I know that um, there has been some GCM upgrades now as well, sort of lurking around depending what uh, state you're in. I know DMW have got an option there. Uh, I personally don't know many people have done that yet, but um, from what I sort of, for my knowledge, I know as people told me on the Facebook group, I just picked up the phone and just called them. Same thing, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, just go straight to the source and just ring up and ask the questions. That's where you're going to get uh, your most best answer. But uh, by the sounds of it, there's definitely options out there to, uh, to get these things uh, up to that sort of four and a half ton or just shy of that uh, for, the, for the car, the GVM, and you still keep your three and a half ton towing, which pretty much gives you just shy of an eight ton uh, GCM. So that's state dependent. Again, just give those guys a call. I, I think down the track, hopefully we're going to see some more options. And if we see, I don't know, this is no inside information, but like if it ends up being a GCM upgrade uh, in a bigger GVM GCM with these airbags, man, that will change these things uh, absolutely massively. So we give these airbags a really good test now. We've done probably probably nearly 20,000 K since we've actually had these things in. So um, including Cape York, so rocks, dirt, mud, everything. Uh, t that's pretty much been full-time towing as well, uh, off-road, and man, they've been absolutely uh, awesome. So there's a bit of a function under there. We've got under our air tank, you can uh, sort of have the air so it's going to both airbags at once, or it can be to uh, each each airbag individually. So when you switch this off, and it's sort of like a off-road off -road mode, I called it. So pretty much if one side's gonna compress, it's gonna put air into the next bag, which is sort of gonna really help with that articulation. Look, it definitely does help uh, when you're off-road. Alright, so another mod we've got hidden under there, which we can uh, finally talk about now. This is actually the first car to have these put in when the car back was, was back at on track 4x4 there. To avoid anyone sort of asking questions and stuff until these things are sort of proven, I uh, obviously had to sort of keep it on the down low. So what this is, is actually the uh, rear billet upper arm. So what this does here, this actually gets rid of the, when you lift it, it gets rid of the, the nolothane bush uh, in the back, back there. So I know that we personally had, I know a couple of blokes had uh, squeaky bushes. No one wants a... Uh, a dry bush uh, in, in their life. So this fully eliminates that. Uh, the arm's sort of a little bit shorter as well, so it really helps with like wheel alignments and all that sort of stuff. And man, it's absolutely awesome. So obviously the main difference if, uh, you know is just that it's just the whole rear end. Again, we've done so many corrugations and four driving and all that sort of stuff lately. And it's just super, super quiet. You don't hear anything in the background, which is uh, absolutely awesome. So that they're now available now, so look, the way you've got this thing set up in the rear there uh, with the bags, these upper arms, everything under there, it's just, I feel like it's just the most absolute ultimate setup. Bit of a look into our rear drawer setup. So we've sort of kept this uh, nice and simple and look, it's been absolutely epic. So this is the uh, full ball four wheel drawers. So we've got the uh, one big main drawer here in the side here. We've just got sort of uh, our recovery gear, some tools and all that sort of stuff. 
uh, in there. This has been absolutely awesome here. At the moment, our rolls are starting to get a little bit. Uh, how you going? I've lost a couple of ball bearings out there, so probably need to uh, do for a set of uh, new rolls and that thing. But in the back here, we've got our sort of uh, tie down points along here. So, look, honestly, we don't use this area that much. Like at the moment, we've been putting out, we've got some kick ass solar panels that we, um, we stack up in there, which we sort of uh, been having those in there but like look if i was to have my time again i'd probably nearly do for us you can customize this is the beauty of these guys uh, you can customize your, your whole drawer setup to sort of how there's so many different options there of what you can do um but i, I nearly would even mind just add another little another little drawer in there just to have a bit more drawer space especially now we're traveling full time there's a few extra things i wouldn't mind uh putting in there but yeah so we've sort of got still got plenty of space in there i've uh, got our slide out fridge slide here ARB uh, Zero fridge. So this is a new fridge. We used to have the Mike Coleman fridge before that. I think Mike Coleman actually make these new ARB fridges. So it's pretty much the same fridge. It's been really, really good. This whole setup in the back here, mega quiet. I'm, I'm a guy that like if I have one rattle, I freak out and have to find out what the hell what the hell it is. So everything here is super quiet, which is uh, what's what was sort of most important to us. So we have this out here. It's got our fold out table uh, in here as well. So we just have a little um, little gas cooker in here and we just pull that out on day trips and stuff, cook some sausages and have a beer on the beach and all that sort of stuff uh, when we're out in uh, on our day trips and stuff. So pretty simple in here. We've got our air outlet there for our um, for our airline. So we just have the to, to pump up the tires, to blow any stuff out of the car and that. Uh, works super, super easy and nice and easy to get through there. So that's pretty much it. Again, it's nothing over the top there. This whole sort of reason of all this is to keep it nice and simple, nice and light, and it's really easy to use. Oh, there you go, guys. And look, honestly, like if we had to do our time again and build a whole new car again, what would we change? Probably pretty much nothing. Like honestly, if we build a new car, and there's a slight chance that something might happen uh, down very, very soon down the track. It literally, I feel like the way we've built this car for what, what our purpose is, is towing full time, traveling full time. So we still want to have the car still sort of feel nice uh, when we're driving down the highway, uh, when we're not towing the van as well, but also be able to get out and tackle some of the most sort of uh, toughest tracks that we can get on. So it's really, I honestly don't really think you can find a car out there that can do all that stuff so well in one car like these things are just absolutely so well and so well proven and like look for the things that we've done in this car and like i said we've, we've sort of covered the only sort of troubles we've had these things the starter motor that battery we had problems with the viscous hub that's literally sort of the only problems we've had one other thing i missed in there we did sort of we did uh split a uh, a cv boot after and it was actually about twenty thousand k's on the highway home from uh road the beach was like really random uh but that's sort of we ended up splitting a cv boot there uh we, so we keep the standard cv boots now we try to aftermarket one but i still think the genuine uh cv boots and cvs uh, sort of the way to go. We did replace the rear CVs, uh, Android on, on track, uh, replaced the new CV in the rear, uh, just because I was starting to slow, get it like a little bit clunky. So uh, just for sort of maintenance wise, we, we decided to chuck some new ones in the back there. But thankfully, uh, we've never we've never uh, broken a CV on this car uh, at all. So a common question we ask is what sort of gear, or what sort of spares you need to take uh, out on the tracks with these things? Now look, for us, like if honestly I end up if I end up some big trouble, I probably am going to be in some big trouble because I don't take much. So I don't have any spare CVs with me. I carried a spare CV boot with me for a while, but that was kind of kind of pointless. Um, but look, honestly, just all we've got in there. I know how to change a CV in there if I need to. Uh, so I've just sort of got the the tools there and that. Just like go. All I did before we went away is just. Grab some different size sockets, the main sort of bolts underneath suspension, uh, just so you can just sort of tighten things, obviously wheels, tires, all that sort of stuff. Um, just make sure you got the right tools for all your sort of main uh, main sort of compartments and things under there. But look, we don't really carry many, like we don't carry spare belts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, look, should we? I don't know. We've just, again, we've done 90,000 Ks of no issues. It's not saying something's gonna happen uh, one day, but look, uh, we sort of haven't, we don't really carry that much gear with us uh, in the case of, you know, we, if, if we were sort of back at home and we're gonna be going on a, you know, extreme forward drive trip where there's like, you know, a good chance of messing stuff up, uh, you know, that's probably when we'll probably take some gear or we're generally around blokes that uh, do have plenty of gear with them. All right, let's talk fuel economy because look, this has to be one of the most uh, common questions. And look, I fully understand of why it would be. So obviously the 
petrol V8, you know, the whole why didn't you get a diesel, all this sort of stuff, like, so much talk about that's probably why these cars weren't selling from the start because it was only in a V8 petrol option. That still is safe. I feel like it's so much more that transition's really started to happen now. And look, now we're sort of talking electric life, not even petrol diesel, which is just cr absolutely crazy. That's uh, obviously the future that's all all going towards. So just touch on the petrol side of things. Like, look, I think it's really sort of a, that really old mentality of like, you know, petrols can't go through water and all that sort of stuff. And look, these days, like this, the engines that are so sealed in these things, they're sort of, even diesels now, they've got so many computers in it. It's really just, I think it's really on, this, on that same path. And look, we've done a lot of deep water crossings with this thing and had absolutely no drums at all. So again, I think that's sort of a really, really sort of old mentality there with that sort of thing. And look, it's not really the whole, petrol diesel thing anymore we're not really even talking about that it's more so just uh going into electric vehicles now and that which is uh generally quite crazy look who would ever thought that diesel would be 20 30 even 40 cents more expensive than unleaded at the moment even or even more expensive expensive than unleaded 98 octane so the uh, times have changed uh, quite a bit so look with the fuel economy look this is probably it's actually really, if my, I'm not bullshitting when I sort of try and, and uh, give people an answer. It's actually quite a, a hard answer to give a truthful sort of numbers because look, the reason behind that is what I believe is the biggest difference between the diesels and the petrols is the diesels gen generally have that little bit of extra torque, especially if you're talking about, uh, you know, Ram 2500s and stuff like that, which is obviously uh, really made to haul. Uh, I think that's sort of the biggest difference because if, even if you get a big headwind day or some uh, quite a fair few, a bit of hilly terrain, uh, the diesels, they're not going to change, the economy is going to go up, but I feel like not as much. Where in the petrol, they're going to do it uh, the same, probably if not not easy I really find going up hills with the horsepower but because that sort of new meters of torque isn't there it's going to rev more which is all, all going to make it use uh, a bit more juice so look for so that's like our, our fuel kind of can literally change between five to ten liters towing so it seems crazy like we can we can pull off low 20s if we're going down a, a freeway on a nice good condition when it's like bit of hills, bit of downhills. So if, if the conditions are sweet, we can be sort of that low 20s. So majority of the time we're mid to high 20s. Again, I, I, it's hard to give a, an absolute honest truth number. I was gonna say 26 to 28 liters per 100 Ks. And then from there, and we start, sort of start getting to headwinds, hills and stuff, uh, we can be around that 30. We've seen it as bad as average sort of 35, uh, sorry, 33 and a half to 34 liters on a really, really bad day. Around town fuel figures for us can kind of be around that 13 to 16. If it's in kind of heavy sort of uh, stop start around that sort of maybe 18 to 19 liters per hundred. Now look, again, it changes so much and like that's our setup here. So we obviously, uh, you know, big mud tires, you know, the cars, our car weighs, when we last weighed, it was sort of, well, sort of a smidge over three and a half ton. That was when we had like uh, full fuel, the fridge was full of beer, camp chairs, like we were fully loaded, me and Mikhail, the dog, like the heaviest the car was ever gonna be, and we're just over three and a half tons. So for us, we needed the car to be at, at pretty much at three and a half ton. Um, our caravan, again, depending, it's around that sort of 3,400 to 3,500 uh, max as well. It just depends, like if we've got fuel, water, whatever's on board uh, there as well. So look, we are sort of really, really close to those limits. We sort of got to, you know, depending on how much fuel's in the car, how much, you know, water we put in the, in the uh, caravan water tank. So look, it's really sort of close. We can sort of monitor it uh, and sort of be in control of what we sort of put on there. So we're definitely, definitely close to the, uh, definitely close to the limits there, which but again, but we're, we're not over as long as you don't have the water tanks full of, uh, in, the, in the caravan um, full of water. Again, obviously the car can be, uh, you know, a bit over a bit over four ton, but because we've got we're towing the caravan all the time, we really got to stick between that uh, that seven ton GCM. So look with this thing though, look if you're just no mods, standard tires, knock three to four liters off that off those figures. Like we've sort of been, we used to be in the 11, 12 liters uh, when we used to like drive to Melbourne and stuff, just when the car was standard. So look, these sort of can be the fuel configures can change so much depending on your setup what you're towing, uh, when you're doing sort of low range four wheel driving, that could be around the 30 liters. So look, it definitely changes so much, but look, hand in hand, like we've been, you know, on the same condition days, towing the same sort of amount of loads, people with 200 series and stuff, fuel economy pretty much exactly the same. So look, but again, are they good on fuel? No, you're not going to be getting in the, you know, 15 liters towing, you know, three, three and a half ton van. But look, end of the day for what they are, 
big V8 petrol, puts a massive smile on your face, it does everything so well, and I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. So to knock over a couple more fuel questions, would I go back to a diesel? No, I wouldn't. I honestly, coming from a Holden Colorado diesel, awesome car, but going to this, the big V8 petrol, I, I, yeah, no, no sort of restrictions, no bloody DPFs and all that sort of stuff. Like it's just, it's just such a clean engine. I, just, I, I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. Look, the only reason I would go to a diesel, if it was gonna be like a Ram 2500 or something like that, where, I would probably kind of get over that because look, the torque and those things, we have towed the van with one of those things and it was absolutely uh, next level. So look, that's probably the only way I would honestly uh, end up going back uh, to a diesel. So look, another question we get is, uh, what you know, is how do you go getting petrol when you go around when you're in remote places? Again, I think this is such sort of an old mentality because so many people in these communities and stuff out there, uh, you know, the Aboriginal communities and stuff, all, a lot of them are driving petrol cars uh, in, in their streets and stuff. So everywhere we've been so far that has diesel, we've been able to get petrol. No, you're not going to get 98 octane everywhere. So uh, definitely 91. There's been the odd place that has uh, just diesel or sometimes even just petrol. But look, honestly, uh, we've never, we don't have a long range tank because we wanted to keep this thing uh, light. So uh, would I, do I wish I had one? Definitely would be good having one uh, when we're going on long distances, like you know, uh, quite remote. We'll just like take some jerry cans with us or something when we're going out uh, remote there. But we've never had an issue uh, getting petrol. Look, it's like anything that if, if you're going to be going that ridiculously remote, like on private property for days and days and days, you're going to have a fuel drop or you're going to take, you know, a backup vehicle full of fuel. Like, you know, I think when people say remote, they're talking about like Gibby River Road, you have fuel every two, three hundred Ks. Cape York, same sort of thing. Obviously, Simpson Desert, you're going to be having to, you know, take, you really do your calculations there, but there is no servos out there anyway. But look, to answer that question of, uh, you know, is it an issue traveling around Australia with a petrol? Absolutely not. Another good tip for servicing is just get someone that knows what they're doing to have a look over your car. So especially if you've done mods and that as well, just get someone that, that knows what to look out for, like just the, the like suspension bolts and things like that. Uh, we saw, I think we've taken to our car once, maybe twice uh, when it was brand new uh, for a service at Nissan and look, it's just, they're just sort of ticking the boxes. Like I know every Nissan dealer is, uh, is different. Some are absolutely great, but look for us, when you get the car back, the airfield is still dirty. They don't really care about your car. That's sort of the number one thing that should be getting uh, should be getting checked, cleaned, or, or replaced. So look, definitely get someone that you trust. Like everyone's uh, everyone's dipping the who works in your car and who you trust, who you don't. Because uh, look, look, one thing is make sure your transmission fluid and these things. Make sure you change that every sort of twenty to thirty thousand k's. You have forty tops. Uh, so if we're towing, we do ours pretty much every 20, uh, 30 absolute tops. That makes a massive difference. And look, this is something in your service book that says it's a lifetime oil and generally Nissan won't touch it. So look, to have a lifetime oil, I honestly don't really know how that can even be a thing. I look, these things get hot and over the time, like it, it, oil gonna, is gonna have to break down. So like for us, we start to get a little bit of uh, between third and fourth, got a little bit of sort of jerkiness uh, in the gears. Once we've got our transmission uh, fluid flush and all that stuff, uh, it was gone. So definitely keep on to, up onto that. Uh, obviously for your, uh, your transfer case as well, your diff oils, just sort of make it maybe even just a habit of every, even just every 20,000 Ks when you take it for a service, just get a, um, you know, all your diffs flush, your transfer case, and get someone that knows what they're doing to, uh, to get the transfer done. It makes a massive difference. It's really gonna help that longevity uh, of your car. Well, there you have it, guys. I really hope you guys got a lot out of this. And look, again, since we've had this patrol, so, like patrols have come such a long way now. Like they are literally everywhere, which I think is absolutely awesome. And look, again, we absolutely love this car. We've just put this thing to the test so much and honestly just keeps giving us such a such a big smile. The things that we've done in this thing, the how cap capable it is, how good it sounds, and that just overall just an absolute amazing car and look it's so cool you guys have sort of watched our videos getting out and seeing these things in action because look end of the day um, look we're probably the ones that are doing the most things in these things like getting out off-roading it's in full drive a couple of times a week airing down and we sort of had this thing at its limits with its gvm limits the gcm limits uh pretty much for the whole time we sort of own this car and look again it's just the, the, the zero like sort of we had just those couple of issues we said we had it's just it, the thing has just been absolutely epic. We couldn't ask uh, any more from this thing. So highly, highly recommend the patrol. And look, are we gonna build another one or have one in the future? 
Maybe. You guys are going to have to stay tuned that. And the reason I'm saying that is because I actually honestly don't know myself. So I'm not just trying to be sneaky there and uh, make you watch an episode for that. I honestly don't know. But look, again, if we were to build another one, it'd be pretty damn similar to what we've done now. We really feel like the, for our needs and what we sort of want and want to do with it, we really, really nailed this thing. So look, guys, again, really hope that uh, gave you guys a lot of information. Uh, pop some comments in the uh, in the, in the the comments below there. If you've got any questions about, uh, about our car, about our setup, again, we will drop some links uh, in our, in our description there of of our, of our website so we'll go into the uh, details a bit more on the car there any sort of links need to uh, go in there like for the suspension uh AAA suspension is the guys who uh who created this key with on track so you can actually go on there getting a lot of information about the airbags and things like that as well so make sure you guys uh check that out make sure it leaves a comment make sure you subscribe if you're really loving the content and let us know what your sort of key takeaways and what you guys like most uh about this episode so thank you so much guys for following along we'll see you out on the tracks